How do you, uh, how'd you guys look today? Excellent, yeah, I thought we had a perfect morning. Horses worked really well, seemed to handle the track great. Uh, very happy. Specifics on each one, maybe? Um, you know, Tap and Try started out, uh, went, a, went a half. Um, good steady breeze throughout, was on the bridle, traveling well in hand, seemed to get over the track really comfortably. Um, you know, sometimes when you, you come in here, you'll see horses kind of bobble a little bit and the ground will break away from them. And I thought in Tappet Trice's case and Forte's, they, they were perfect. So, um, happy to see that. How much improvement have you seen, at, and how would we judge it, in Forte from he's two for two at three and then he was a you know, Breeders' Cup and Eclipse champion at two? I mean, are you seeing the progression and how's that manifesting itself? Well, I mean, if you, if you kind of look at, at his progression number-wise, if you're a sheep follower, you know, he's, he's kind of made those little steps forward each each start. Um, same thing with Tapa Trice. And, and you know, what I'm encouraged by with both of them is that how they handled the mile and eighth, how they finished the, in their final preps going a mile and eighth gives you confidence that they'll continue to improve stretching out. Todd, Forte is the most accomplished horse in the race. He's going to be the favorite. How did he after what he had to endure to, to win the, the, the Florida Derby and the wide trip, how has he progressed? What have, what have you seen in the morning since that race? Uh, he, he's a very straightforward professional horse to train. He's a uh, he's push button, you know, and when Irad asked him to sit off of his work meet a little bit this morning, he's very comfortable doing that. When he pressed go, he quickly accelerated to go, put a head in front of his work mate. And, um, he's just a very straightforward professional horse and, and uh, you know, like I said what what impressed me the most about the Florida Derby is what he did the final eighth of a mile because not too many horses will you see make up that kind of ground that quickly late in a race. I, to be able to handle anything maybe what it'll have to handle in the Derby. Yeah I mean there's there's no no scenario like we'll see on Derby Day anywhere um, but uh, you know the fact that he handled the, Good crowd at the Florida Derby and extended uh, saddling paddock and ex very extended post parade. You know those kind of things. Uh, you know I think uh, the fact that he handled all that well gives us encouragement. He'll do the same here. And the fact that Irad's been on him on a, on every race and knows him so well. Added conference one of the greatest riders we're seeing right now. Yeah, Irad's riding terrifically and uh, you know, he has a good rapport with this horse. He knows him well. He's as you said, ridden him every start and also been on him a lot in the morning, so uh, you know, that's an added benefit. When you get this far out, what are some of the things you're looking for when they hit the track? Just, uh, you know, like we saw this morning, the fact that uh, they, they both got over the ground well, seemed to handle the footing extremely well, and you know, you're looking for good energy and uh, really just more of what we've been seeing from, from them all along. I think you're, um, Pretty much the same thing next week when you take them out again. Uh, we'll probably do a little less next week. Um, we'll play it by ear and see how the week goes. Have you ever brought a horse here, a derby horse here, and thought you didn't like the way they were getting over the track and you thought this is going to be a long week or a long couple of weeks? Yeah, we've had a few of those, and, and what's weird is had a couple of them and they they ran better than I thought they would. You know, and they seemed, didn't seem to handle it that great, and then. Um, I remember Charming Kitten, who was pure turf horse and didn't seem to handle it at all, but we gave him a try and actually handled it better in the afternoon than I thought. And, you know, we've all talked about that before. Sometimes the track's different on race day than it is preparation for it. But you know, I remember Barrazano coming here and you could see like he was just, you know, bobbing his head every three or four strides, just the ground was slipping away from him. That had me concerned. Same thing with Dunkirk when we were here and the forecast was rainy and you could tell he wasn't handling it off track as well as a uh, fast one. And, so yeah, sometimes you can get some, some clues to that. And things can sometimes work out differently in the afternoon. When you've been at the Derby as many times as you have, you still get excited when, when you get cl closer to the race? Uh, it goes without saying, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, watching the forecast really closely all week, worrying about which day to go. Glad we were able to get it in on the scheduled day. And rain held off long enough. So yeah, I mean, these, uh, you know, these workouts become, become super, super important. and. Uh, Keep you up at night waiting for them. We always ask this question, the public still likes it. What do these two remind you of any other horses you brought up to the Derby, Todd? 
as far as Tappet drives and Forte? No, I mean, I, I think in both horses' case, it remind me a little bit of always dreaming, just that, you know, we had such a good schedule all winter and everything kind of just, you know, continued to fall into place. So, um, with the exception we got here with always dreaming, got super aggressive and these two Colts have settled in perfectly. And you brought him in a little bit earlier than maybe in the last few years, is that right? Mm, no, it's the same as we've done the last few years. Yeah. Um, just kind of, you know, it's when you have a couple of them coming from different uh, venues, we didn't want to ship Tapatrice back to Florida and then back right. up here a week later, so we felt like the easiest thing to do was consolidate here. And you came in with always dreaming as a favorite, and he got it done. Yep, he's uh, the only favorite we've run, so we'll see if we go off favorite again, keep the streak alive. Any word on a jockey for uh, Kings Barnes at this point? Nothing firmed up yet, but I think we'll probably do something by the week, you know, by Sunday.